Yeshua, Yeshua, I'ma bless his name. I'ma bless his name. Yeshua, Yeshua, I'ma bless his name. I'ma bless his name. Yeshua, Yeshua, I'ma bless his name. I'ma bless his name. Yeshua, Yeshua, I'ma bless his name. We will bless Yeshua, Yeshua. It is great to be back to Living Faith Tabernacle. I'm so excited to be back, and I thank my God that we're here. I'm so happy to be here today. It's good to be back. Welcome home. We gonna praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to be back to the church that makes you fall in love with church all over again. Everything that you've been through all led up to this one moment. The rejection, the disappointments. But today, it's your turn not to go through the door, but to go through the roof. They blocked you. They hindered you. They stood in your way. They wouldn't allow you to come in. But guess what? It's your turn. It's your turn. The door is too small for your God. Go through the roof. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high, 
we lift you high and are so open wide as we cry Lord we lift your name high yeah and are so open wide as the sky we lift you high we lift you high and hearts open wide as we cry Lord we lift your name high let all the other names fade away let all the other names fade away till there's only you let all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place let all the other names fade away let it all fade let all the other names till there's only you God only you let all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Jesus take your place God take your place in our lives God take your place right now God we only need you let all the other names fade let all the other names fade away God we only need you yeah 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 Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high, and we lift you high. Hands up, hearts open, wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Pastor Tuck here. Listen. Do me a favor and share this with some folks and let them know that we're in Bible study tonight. Listen, it's going to be a phenomenal word. Tonight we're going to talk about how God can block the things of the enemy. You know, many times the enemy tries to stand in our way. He tries to stop us from being what God wants us to have. But tonight I'm here to tell you that the enemy is about to be blocked that the Spirit of the Lord is about to lift up a standard. And just when you thought you were going to lose, just when you thought you were going to lose your mind and go out, God says, I got you. I'm gonna bless you. So share this with some people tonight and we're gonna let Antavia sing a little bit more as you guys are coming in. Hallelujah. Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away, God, let it fade, yeah. Let all the other names fade away, God, till there's only you, God, we only need you. Hands up, hands up, hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. And we lift you high, hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. Lord, we lift your name high. Before we jump into the word, can we pray for you tonight? Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you, God, for allowing us to come collectively as a body, to study your word, to glean from your word, to learn something from this word that we've never learned before. And God, tonight we ask God that you show us who you are in this word. And God, we bless you and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So guess what? God is about to block what the enemy thought that he was going to take you out with. So let's go to the book of Revelations, all the way to the back 
of the book. Revelations 12, 13. And when the dragon saw that he cast, he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth a man child. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half of time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth waters as floods after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So I want you to write this down tonight. God blocked it. So let's let's dive into the word tonight. Uh, you see a woman who uh, is carrying purpose. Uh, she's pregnant with this baby and the enemy is upset because she's carrying purpose. Now, if there are some people that are talking about you or laughing at you or saying, you know, that it's probably because you carry a purpose. If there's some people that are upset with you right now, there's, there's something that you're carrying that they do not like. And so I've learned in this season, because I've been in ministry for a while, is that everybody isn't going to like what you produce. Everybody isn't going to like what you do. So therefore you have to be confident in who God has called you to be. So this lady is carrying this baby, this precious baby, this, this precious gift, which is purpose. There's purpose in this baby. And the Bible says that the enemy is upset. The enemy is mad. So now what the enemy does, the enemy begins to flood her with lies. Now, now I want to put a little period there because you have to understand that, that if you're doing good, there are going to be some people that are probably going to be talking about you because the word says that you got to be careful when every man speaks well of you because when every man speaks well of you, that means sin lies at your door. So it's vital, it's important that you understand that usually when you're doing good, you need that friction and that retraction. You need that person that's standing on the sideline that's saying, oh, I don't really like them that much. I don't really, I don't really care for them that much. That's probably an individual that, that's going to push you, help push you into your destiny and help you go where you need to go. So let's be lying back to the word. The Bible says that this woman is carrying purpose and the enemy is mad. If there are some people that are mad at you because you are carrying purpose, there are some people that simply won't like you because you got purpose on your life. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. There are some people that simply that can't won't even be able to stand you because you got purpose on your life. Come on. I want you to say that with me tonight. I have purpose on my life. Come on. Say it with me. I have purpose on my life. Come on. One more time. I have purpose on my life. Yes, you have purpose on your life. That's why the people don't like you. That's why they've been talking about you. That's why they've been putting you down. That's why they've been not allowing you in that room because you have purpose on your life life. Now, now let's keep going with the story. The Bible says that the enemy is now mad with this woman because she's carrying purpose. Some people don't even know why they don't like you. They just know that they don't like you because you got purpose on you. They just know that they can't stand you because you got purpose on you. I wish I had some people on here that says, look, I got purpose on my life. I got, I got miracles and blessings on my life. I got purpose on on my life and I gotta keep going. So, 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 so let's, let's catch this. Let's catch this. Let's catch this. Let's catch this. I need you to understand this. So the Bible says that the enemy begins to flood her with lies. And as the enemy begins to flood her with lies, the Bible says that she begins to drown. She begins to go under and she begins to sink because now the enemy is trying to take her out because she has purpose in your life. Can I submit something to you tonight? That if, you, if it looks like the enemy is trying to take you out, he's only trying to smother the purpose that is on the inside of you. He's only trying to take out the purpose that has been placed on the inside. That's why you got to know and 
understand what God has called you to be. But let me tell you what God does. God comes in and blocks the flood that the enemy has thrown at her. And as the woman is drowning, the Bible says that God gives the woman two wings. There's an old song that they used to sing when I was growing up in the country church, two wings to bail my, you know, I got to get out of here because two wings going to get me out. But they used to sing this song, two wings when I was growing up, you know, and to, to fly away, to get away from this thing. The Bible says that God gives the woman two wings and she uses the two wings. This is the crazy part to fly to the desert where God prepared for her. Now I'm tripping because I'm like, now God, how are you going to prepare the desert for her? Why, why not prepare paradise for her? But the Bible says that I prepared the desert for her. I gave her two wings to fly from the flood and to fly to the desert. Now let me tell y'all in here. See, let me tell you what people don't understand. People don't understand that you are going to survive in the desert because God has anointed you to be able to survive in the, in the desert this season. This is good stuff tonight. Come on, this is good stuff tonight. You are going to survive in the desert. Why? Because God has designed the desert just for you. Everybody else done died of thirst. Everybody else done gave up, done quit, done fell in the towel, done throw in the towel, but you still going. You still doing what you need to do. The Bible says that God prepared a place for her and that place that he prepared for her was in the desert. Y'all got to catch this tonight. It was in the desert. If you are in a desert place right now, don't be afraid. Don't be scared because know that this is what God has you and this is what God has placed you and God is trying to cover and keep your purpose in the desert. What are you saying tonight, Pastor Tuck? What I'm saying to you is in your desert place, God is going to cover your purpose and keep your purpose because you are anointed for the desert. Come on, write it on the screen. Come on, write it on the screen. You are anointed for the desert. You are anointed for this. You are not going to die. You are not going to lose your mind. You are not going to lose your stuff, but you are anointed to survive in this desert. God anointed her to be able to survive in this desert place. I wish I had somebody on here tonight that says, Lord, I'm in a desert, but I've been surviving. Come on. I ain't got but two pennies to rub together, but I've been surviving. I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I've been surviving. You know why you are surviving you are surviving because God has anointed you for the desert come on write that down I'm anointed for the desert I'm anointed for the desert I'm anointed for this moment for this season for this time some of y'all don't even know how you made it the way you made it and done what you did it's because you are anointed for this if the enemy is attacking you it is because you have purpose on your life I had somebody to catch this tonight. They got purpose on their life that says, I know why I'm going through what I'm going through. You're going through what you're going through because the enemy is trying to take the purpose that is on the inside of you. And he's trying to destroy the purpose that God has placed in you. Come on, let's keep going. Bible says that the enemy finds out where she is. Listen, listen, you can go read this in your leisure. The Bible says that the enemy goes and finds her where she is in the desert place and he tries to destroy destroy her and take her out. But I'll tell you what God does. The Bible says that God comes in because, but she forgets that she has two wings. Mm, 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 mm. She forgets that she has the ability to fly. Why? Because now the enemy is flooding her with lies. At first he was flooding her, but now he's flooding her with lies. And now she's forgotten that she has the ability to be able to fly. So, so let me ask you a question tonight. When did you lose your ability to stop flying? Where did you lose your ability to stop flying? When did you stop believing that you could? Where did you stop believing that you could? Now this woman with two wings has now stopped believing that she can. And now with two wings, she's drowning. How is it that I have wings, the word of God in my heart, but now 
I'm drowning. Now I'm falling apart. That's because I don't trust what's been placed on me and in me. She began to not trust what was placed on her and in her. And she began to trust in the lies of the enemy. And the enemy began to drown her in lies. And she began to drown and sink. And let me tell you tonight, you got to start trusting what God has put on the inside of you. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but there's somebody on here tonight that has been discouraged, that is looking at all the things that are going on around them. But can I share something with you tonight? Can I give you a nugget tonight? Trust what God has placed in you. Trust what God has put on the inside of you. Because let me tell you what the word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I, oh, I like that scripture tonight. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You got greatness on the inside of you, purpose on the inside of you and you can not stand on the sidelines and wait. You got to trust God and know that God is going to pull you through. Let's conclude tonight. Bible says, Bible says, Bible says, as we're concluding, Bible says that Jesus or God scoops the woman up and he takes her in his arms and now the enemy can no longer touch her and he blocks the flood and the lies and all the things that are coming against the woman. And now when the woman should have died, she now lives and she now bursts out her purpose. Listen, you are about to birth out purpose. And God is about to block every single thing that the enemy has thrown in your way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me. Not against me, I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Whatever you need me to be, God, I am that. Oh, I am who you say I am. Oh, I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Can I pray with you tonight? Lord, I thank you for your power. God, we thank you for your anointing and your grace. And tonight we thank you, God, that you are blocking everything that the enemy has thrown in our way. And we will be victorious because you blocked what the enemy thought was going to take us out. So go and deliver your purpose. Go and deliver what it is that God wants you to do. I'm Pastor Tuck, and this is Living Faith, the church that makes you fall in love with church all over again. Hey guys, it's Pastor Tuck here, and thank you so much for checking us out on this morning with our Worship on the Roof service. Listen, we are going to be back in the sanctuary really, really soon, and I can't wait to see you guys. Let me start off by saying, listen, I, I, I thank all of you for giving and supporting the church. You know, we've been blessing the community, not just this community, but we've been able to bless Kenya and other people across the world, and even in our own community. So I'm grateful for you and I just want to say thank you to all of our supporters, to all of the people that have given. I appreciate you. Of course, there are several ways to give here in the Living Faith Church. You can text, you can do PayPal, you can write a check, you can come by the church. The office is open Monday through Thursday. But listen, we thank you and I just want to say thank you for partnering with us and thank you for supporting us. Here in the Living Faith Church, we always say a decree and tonight or this morning, I'm going to share that 
decree with you. And if you'll say it with me, this is my seed. God bless me with this seed. And today I'm planting this seed. Guess what? It will, it shall, and it must reap a harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you and I can't wait to see you.